bring in our next guest, and that is Mike Pearson uh, from Sports LLL, Legends, Lists, and Lore. Dot com, great new website with a lot of addicting interactive uh, displays and audio and puzzles and you name it. And nobody knows more about Michigan State and Illinois than Mike Pearson. Mike, you worked at both schools and you've seen a lot of basketball between these teams, not just the 2005 Final Four where they were both in St. Louis, but going back to one of the great upsets and uh, Michigan State team that was ranked number one until they ran into the Fighting Illini. Well, that was, that was a big game. Uh, I was in my, I think, of my third or fourth year at Illinois as an assistant uh, to Tab Bennett back in those days, and Illinois had been starved. I mean, they, they hadn't won a thing. You remember the, the flush fund uh, had, had occurred about 10 years. It took them about 10, 12 years to come out of this funk. And finally, Lou Henson had this team. They were 14-0, and and here come the Mighty Spartans, number one in the country, uh, Irvin Magic Johnson, Gregory Kelser, etc. Come to Champaign. The place is just jammed. I remember uh, that week so vividly because, you know, obviously that was a big week. Uh, my alma mater against my employer at that point. <laughs> And uh, they were selling, or they didn't have pom poms for some reason in those days. And they were selling orange pieces of fabric at all the fabric stores in town, so that fans could wave something. And they sold out of every piece of orange fabric in Champagne. And uh, it it, uh, it uh, came up to the, this fantastic game. It, it lived. Uh, uh, lives, still lives in infamy in, in uh, Illini uh, le, uh, lore, uh, probably not as much in Michigan State lore, but I was uh, lucky enough to find a clip uh, from a uh, longtime Illini announcer. His name was Sid Roth. And this was ranked the number five moment in Illinois basketball history, right? Right, yes. Uh, and uh, Illinois has had some proud basketball history, but uh, this one uh, was number five, and, and I think that's got a cue up. Right. And unbeaten Michigan State invaded Champaign to take on the third rank and also unbeaten Illini. We joined WSOY Radio Sid Rutz. We're down to nine seconds. We're down to eight seconds. He drives in the corner, and he got around one minute. A shot! Now, when last we left Sid Rotz, Illinois was leading Michigan by a bucket. 57 to 55, the assembly hall is going wild. I am the only calm person in the whole arena. Certainly Michigan State's coach Judd Heathcote and Lou Henson of the Illini were not for the final three seconds. All right, Donnelly will end on the ball. He's going to come in with it. Comes in, Johnson starting up. A long pass, a long shot taken. It's going to be intercepted by Illinois. Isn't that not the greatest clip you've ever heard? That uh, was the know, greatest okay. moment of Sid Rotz's life, yeah. I'll guarantee you that. He's the calmest Sid, person in the building. Was, Sid was a character to begin with. but So so the Illini uh, uh, go to 15-0. and 0. That was on a Thursday night. They play Ohio State, a very good team. This was Herb Williams and Kelvin Ramsey right. and a bunch of other great Teams. It was a blizzard on Saturday. I remember that specifically. Uh, the Buckeyes came to Champaign and beat the Illini in overtime. The Illini, from that point on, went south. They end. They started out fifteen and zero. They ended up nineteen and eleven. Holy cow! They lost eleven of their last fifteen. Yikes! Yep. Wow, well, that makes Northwestern's uh, and Wisconsin's plunges here look yeah. uh, pretty strong. Well, there are a lot of things we can talk about in terms of uh, the game and uh, what it means, uh, what basketball means in Illinois. It never ceases to amaze me when I go on the show with Lauren Tate. And uh, it can be football season, it can be the first game of the Big Ten season, and still taking half of his calls about Illinois basketball. Oh, it's always it's always basketball season in Champaign, and and this game tonight is intriguing. 
uh, obviously, it's very important for Michigan State. It might be more important for Illinois tonight because this is a game that will distinguish whether or not, in my opinion, John Gross keeps his job. And here's what's really interesting about it. John Gross has assembled a recruiting class that ranks in the top 10. He's got a big uh, five-star big man from East St. Louis named Jer- Jeremiah Tillman. He's got three guards, Trent Frazier, a four-star guard from West Palm Beach, DeMonte Williams, who's the son of Frankie Williams, remember him oh, yeah. uh, from the from the uh, late 90s, uh, Javon Pickett, another three-star guard from Belleville, all, all from uh, uh, the uh, St. Louis area. And then they're hot on the trail of this, uh, another 6'5 guard from uh, Edwardsville, again down in East St. Louis area, named Mark Smith. So if John Gross gets fired, does this great recruiting class come to Illinois? Uh, I mean, it's really intriguing. Well, there's some other Michigan State basketball on this date, on March 1st, historically. Uh, In 1980, Jay Vincent wins a Big Ten scoring title on March 1st. In 1990, one of the great games uh, in the history of Breslin Center, uh, Michigan State defeating Michigan, the number eight Wolverine, 78-70. And Steve Smith outscored Terry Mills. That night, what was that, Mike? Thirty-six to thirty-one, or something. Thirty-six to thirty-one uh, in a real shootout. It's really regarded as uh, MSU's most important basketball victory, uh, certainly at the Breslin Center since uh, the heyday in '79. And we have some birthdays. Mike loves to chronicle birthdays. He knows more about Big Ten birthdays than anyone. And Friday is Kelly Miller, assistant hockey coach in Spartan Great '54. But on the basketball front, tomorrow. Jeff Troff. It is hard to believe, Mike, that he's 61. <laughs> 61. Wasn't he just starting against Indiana in wow. 1976? Unbelievable. Draymond Green on Saturday turns 27. And can you believe Scott Skiles is 53 on Sunday? 53. I tell you what, I would take uh, Scott Skiles, Draymond Green, and three others and play you in, in any basketball game. <laughs> Guys, if I were to ask you the all-time series between Illinois and Michigan State, would you say it's close, or would you say one team is considerably ahead of the other? Wins, loss, Mike? Oh, it's very close. It's very close. Uh, in fact, it, it may be it may be even tied. I, I'd have to look at that, but I'll, 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 sa- I'll save you the time. I have looked at it, and I'm looking at it right now. Michigan State, one more win, 59-58 and 58 all-time about that? against Illinois. Yep. And here's another March 1st history lesson for you. The last time they played on March 1st, they've only played twice in their entire series on March 1st, was a trip to East Lansing for the Illini and they beat the Spartans. Okay. And then in 1975, for the birthday you just mentioned, maybe he was on the team in 75, the Spartans got a win in Champaign. Champaign. So, so the road team has the won road both team of those has won on, oh, I see on March 1st. So we'll see if History repeats itself. Hey, Mike, uh, thanks so much. at sports, com, and the Twitter is B1G, like Big Ten, B, the numeral 1G, LLL. And as I always say, don't do it if you only have four minutes because you're going to be late. So it's, Thanks, uh, guys. Nice. Right. Uh, great to talk to you again. Mike Pearson.